Maybe your assignment was to fix kitchen. And you went because you saw somebody facing good flush toilet, you decided to do the same thing. Amen. So you can help them. At the end, they will congratulate the person that was sent to the toilet. They won't look for you. It was not your assignment. If you had done your kitchen work, they would have congratulated you. Amen. So if you don't understand your purpose, you'll be running after other people's things. Some people are called to be in America to be pastor. Some people are called to be in Asia. Some people are called to be in Europe. Some people are called to be in Australia. It's not every opportunity that you have that you are called to. How many persons here can be counted when you don't have opportunity to steal? But you are not called to be a rogue. <laughs> so because you have opportunity to go to Europe or go to America or go to Australia or go to Asia, does not mean you are called to stay there. So find out what has God called you to. I went, I went, I went to America, man, I saw man, three men, and I went, nobody, they kind of cast the driver and said, I think I got to move there. Go there and see what will happen. Yeah. If nobody calls you there, you're in trouble. So God kept them in himself for them to have understanding of their purpose. He was moving everywhere with them and everything else that God was doing, he was doing along with me. So what did God do in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7? The Bible says that God came down to the earth. Man was not on the earth, man was in God. When God was creating the earth, he was not on the earth. He was where he could be. Because you know that he created heaven and earth, eh? Genesis 1, what did God do? So where was he when he created heaven and earth? That where he was? <laughs> he was he was existing before heaven and earth was created. You know, sometimes I can say God is the beginning and the end, but sometimes I feel guilty in saying that because God was around before the beginning started. So many times when you hear me pray before I preach, I always say he was before the beginning and he shall be after the end. So he's not just the beginning and the end. He was before the beginning and he will be after the end. So sometimes God is bigger than what you try to describe him to be. So where God was, was where man was. Where God was, was where man was. So he moved with them until one day God came on the earth. And the Bible says that he formed the dust of the earth. He formed the dust, you know, like a little child playing and it just formed the clay. He formed the dust of the earth. And right after forming the dust, then the Bible says that God projected. What did he do? He put his breath where? Into the clay, eh? Into the dust. He put his breath. Now, what was he doing when he was doing it? You see, he was projecting the man that he created, which is the male and female that was inside him. He was projecting them in the clay. So that was image projection. The image that he got from the warehouse that was inside of him. It was that image that he was projecting in the clay. So when he did like this, the thing that was inside him entered the clay. And the clay became what? A living soul. The clay became a living soul. Now, what he formed, the dust he formed, was the male dust. But what entered the clay was not just the male, it was both the male and female. Now, I don't know if somebody's understanding that. So when he projected what he created that was inside him, when he projected it, he did not keep anyone back. He released the whole creation. He released the whole creation. And that creation was carrying everything about him into the clay. But because it was the male that was formed, the clay that was
was one was a male clay. So the two of them enter, but the male show up. That is the reason why when he wanted to form the woman, he didn't go to form another clay. Because the woman was also kept in the same clay. So he had to put the male clay to sleep and take the woman out of the male. Are you following me? So the image he projected was in the clay. The book was there. But everybody was seeing when Adam moving around. But well, everywhere Adam where Eve was there. Are you with me? Yes. Eve was there. The only difference is that when they put Adam to sleep to remove Eve, Adam was still sleeping when Eve came out. So Eve saw Adam weak point before he got up. <laughs> Something is strong, Delilah know where to mess him up. No matter how David is powerful, Bathsheba know how to seduce him. No matter how wise Solomon is, one thousand women will still capture him because he was sleeping. When he came out, and they said, Whoa, so that was <laughs> I know you're a big fan. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So the image was projected in the clay. Now I want you to understand very well. Since that time, God has been having his warehouse. Jeremiah chapter 1. God was assigning Jeremiah. And Jeremiah felt like he was not qualified. He felt like God did not know him. You know, every time God is giving you a sign, you can almost think that God doesn't know you. If we go back to the book of Judges, in Judges chapter 6, there's something that happened there. And then the Midianites took over Israel, and the Israelites were hiding themselves. And men like Gideon was hiding himself in one corner, that he felt that nobody would see him. Because he felt so much incompetent with the enemies already have taken over the place. And while he was hiding, an angel of the Lord appeared there. Amen. And said, Gideon, mighty man of valor. The Lord is with you. Amen. Gideon love. You know, when you don't have confidence in yourself, you always think you need other people Amen. to make something happen. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. Huh? Yes. The angel of the Lord greeted me. You know say? The Lord is with you. Yes. You mighty man of valor. Yes. And what was Gideon's response? How can you say the Lord is with us? They never say us, they say you. <laughs> Where are the miracles that our fathers told us about? They are talking to you, including everybody. Yes. Because he feels that he cannot be here. But he said, you. And as they went further in discussion, the angel said, with you, the Lord will deliver the land. He didn't say, no. Maybe you've mistaken me for somebody else. So let me tell you who I am. I am from the tribe of Manasseh. And my father's house is the smallest. My father's tribe is the smallest. And I am the smallest from my father's house. So you're talking to the wrong person. Many times, when you lack confidence, you won't even believe what God is saying to you. So God was assigning. The same thing happened to Saul that became king. Saul was the least in his father's house in 1 Samuel chapter 9, beginning from verse 21. He was the least. And that's why they say him to look for things that were missing. The asses that were missing, the donkeys. He went to look for them. But while looking for 
morning he met the prophet, and the prophet is telling him something different. The prophet said, today you will eat with me in the high places. <laughs> he started thinking, I want to make no means. I know you're looking for some things that are missing, but you will find them. They are already been formed. But right now, the whole Israel attention is on you, even your father's house. He said, I want to make what he said. After all the prophets said, after eating, time to anoint him as king, he was hiding. He went in the dome side to hide himself so that they can't find him. The prophet still located him. Yeah. Yeah. He said, Moses, go and set my people free. Moses said, I want a real God and force God. Because I ran away from Egypt. They are looking for me for a crime I committed. How can you send me to the same place? God showed him many signs. And he still told God, God, you know what? Even though he showed me all this signs, but he still know I can't talk. He gave all other excuses. So God said to Jeremiah, I want you to go and talk to the people. <laughs> Jeremiah said, God, I don't think you know me. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4, what did God say? God said, before, everybody said before. Before. Now this. Even the beginning you know, before that beginning, I knew you. Before you were formed, God was very exact. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. How many of you have known that before you were formed in your mother's womb, God knew you? Eh? Let me see that. God knew you? Yes. Are you convinced about that? Yes. So he knows you more than you know yourself. Yes. That means what he says about you is final. Yes. Not what you think about yourself. Yes. And not what people who knew you from your mother would think about you. Yes. But what he says, because he knew you, he said before you were formed, before you became a clot of blood, before that spring and air came together to form the zygote, I knew you. Before you developed to the embryonic stage, I knew you. I knew you before the doctor got to know that your mother was pregnant. You see when God started knowing you? Before you were formed, I knew you. And not only that I knew you, but before that time, I already ordained you as a prophet to the nations. Amen. So your prophetic work is not starting when you saw a vision. I knew you. Even before the same quarter could say something to your father and mother, I knew you. So where did God know him from? Eh? God knew him from the warehouse. So he was in the warehouse of God and God was just looking for whom to pass him through. You know, every one of us here, your mother and father should be happy that you came through there. Because you were something special in God's warehouse. Amen. Amen. Before you were formed, I knew you. So where did God know him from? God knew him from the warehouse. He was brought out of the warehouse and placed in his mother's womb. See how Somebody is here with me. Everything God was telling Abraham, even though people say you are barren, you and your wife, but I'll make you father of nations. That thing that God had for him was already in the warehouse. So he kept it. That is the reason why when the angels came to Abraham, and Abraham and his wife prepared food for them and they ate, they said, Next year by this time, because the thing was already there. Uh, I said, the thing was already 